I was working for a corporate um, company as an engineer for four years. I had just gotten married and two or three months after that, they went through a massive layoff. So I was laid off and didn't know what to do. I'd recently graduated from college and ended up 10 months after being laid off, finding a job at a school in Charlotte as a secretary. So there was a significant significant cut in pay going from corporate to being a secretary in a school. But God had a way of just taking that that whole experience and just turning my entire life around. So I had the opportunity to interface with so many teenagers and I realized how much I loved them and wanted to be there for them and mentor them and counsel them. And then a lot of adults started coming my way as well just to, you know, they were looking for encouragement or just, you know, a word from God for that particular day. So I found myself doing a lot of ministry in a public school setting without sometimes even saying Jesus or God or the Bible, but just having his principles and the theology there. So through that experience, I realized that I didn't have the skills or the tools to back up where my heart was and where I felt like God was leading me. And I just woke up one day and looked at my husband and said, I think I want to go to seminary and decided that I was going to look at Gordon-Conwell since they were local here in Charlotte and they had an adult model that I just thought was just amazing to be able to work and go to school at the same time and my husband was all for it. I applied for it. the urban ministry program and knew eventually that I wanted to apply for the counseling program as well. So I was accepted into urban ministry that spring semester and then accepted into the counseling program that fall semester. So. God had a way of just lining it all up for me and I felt like I was there for a purpose to get the tools to back up that passion. Seminary for me was a peaceful experience, a utopia, a place where I could meet God even in an educational setting. Gordon Conwell was a very different experience for me because um, I'm an African-American female who came to a predominantly Caucasian seminary um, and I had gone to a predominantly African-American high school or predominantly African-American um, college. So coming here was definitely a little bit of culture shock for me. But um, it was awesome because God opened up doors for me, even in myself. I was able to grow and develop in new ways and be exposed to all types of cultures of, of different people who were here and that's just been amazing. Gordon Conwell is, even as a school and even as an employee, I feel like I'm a part of a big family of sisters and brothers in Christ. Um, it's not just about um, my familial family, my biological family, but it's about the family of Christ, and I feel like I have all these sisters and brothers that I never would have had if I didn't come here. The one thing that I'm the most proud of, and it's probably because I'm a little bit biased, is the counseling program and all the students that pass the um, National Counselor's Exam and the uh, Licensed Marriage and Family um, Exam. It's just been amazing to see a school that is so closely related to the Bible and theology and see them be able to have all these people who pass this exam. And I've seen other people who graduate from secular universities and they struggle. Um, so it's been awesome and I think that gives us really good bragging rights to say that we've done an excellent job of educating the students here. One of the biggest things that I feel like Gordon Conwell does, um, besides just the academic aspect of it, but spiritually, is on Friday nights when we would have chapel. It was amazing because there was singing, there was always a speaker, someone there to encourage you in, in the spiritual realm. Um, the other thing is, is that a lot of the classes, when we were there, they had this theological piece that really just pulled on your spirit and just caused you to just challenge yourself and grow even more and develop more spiritual disciplines. And a lot of the professors, this kind of goes back to being a part of a family, just having those times in your life where things are hard or um, difficult, they would reach out and say, well, we're praying for you. And, you know, sometimes things like this happen in ministry and it's really important to be prepared from a spiritual level to be able to deal with that. And also, um, they would join with you in spiritual warfare 
um, which helps you learn even more about how to, to do that and navigate those difficult times. I think one of the, the best things that could have happened to me was being here and actually having um, that community around me that I could reach out to and not just through a computer. And I, I love technology, I do, because that's what I do full time. However, I know that there is something to be said of having those face-to-face -face conversations and not allowing the technology always to be that barrier between us. Um, I realize that, that it also can be a way to reach out to areas that we might not be able to reach. But I do also value greatly just being able to have a conversation face-to-face -face with someone and them being able to see me and see what I'm going through, whether good or bad, and be able to celebrate with me in the same space with me. And learning as well as spiritual growth, I feel like has a very powerful impact whenever you're in the same place on one accord in that one place. My prayer and hope for Gordon Conwell would be that it would grow by leaps and bounds, that God would just continue to bless it beyond our wildest dreams and anything that we could think, that it would be um, Ephesians 3 and 20, just exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask of him.